going live. We are going live, y'all. We're going live. Let's see. It's loading up. And then we're going to get started. Okay. I'm pressing the mute button. Hopefully there won't be an echo. Oh, good. No echo. All right. Okay. I'm going to hit the record button. But there is Miss Larissa. Okay. Yay, we're rolling. All right. And there's Miss Larissa Wells. We got all of our panelists. So we've got, I think we've got just about everybody. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see the flyer? Give me a thumbs up. Yes. All right. Thank you. There's our flyer there. And so I want to welcome everybody. We do have all of our panelists. We have our, our guest of honor. Um, and so I want to thank you all for being here. I want to just center this in gratitude and say thank y'all for taking the time, our wonderful, beautiful youth uh, who are here with us. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is meant to be uh, 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 just kind of a conversation. Our panelists uh, are going to be asked questions. And at the end, if, if you all want to chime in, if you want to ask questions, that is totally okay. This is for you all. Um, I'm going to start with a video so that all of you can kind of get a snapshot of Miss JBH, our guest of honor. Okay. So I'm going to play that video. You see? Where did it go? Joining us right now is one of oh. America's most successful female entrepreneurs. Uh -oh. Special guest here today. The first African American. Wait a minute. Hold on. I can't see anything. Can you got Robert? Can you see? No. Okay. Mm. Can anybody see me? Let's see. I see your. Oh, computer. Phil said reload the page. Okay, thank you, Phil. <laughs> I'm doing that. I'm going to reload it. Let's see. I'm reloading. Bear with me, y'all. Trying to get our video up. And Be patient to Italia. God just wants everybody's attention. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. I think I will do this. Let's try this. Ah, all right. See, look at God. I got it. <laughs> I was able to pull it up. <laughs> all right. Here we go. I'm going to play the video, y'all. Joining us right now is one of America's most successful female entrepreneurs. Special guest speaker today. The first African-American woman to own a billion-dollar company. Her name is Janice Bryant Howroyd. She's the founder and CEO of Act One Staffing and Employment Company that she started with a $900 loan from her mother and turned into a billion-dollar enterprise. She's now ranked by Forbes as second wealthiest self-made African-American woman in America behind for Winfrey. Act One is one of the largest staffing companies in the United States. Janice discovered she had a knack for hooking up people with jobs, so she launched a staffing business. She spent almost 40 years helping others find work. She could fill a book with her words of wisdom. On the pulse of America's labor market, Janice Bryant Howroyd is founder and CEO of staffing firm Act One, the largest private staffing company in North America. Janice, great to have you on the show. Wonderful to be thank here. Thank you so much Wonderful. for joining us. Janice, welcome to the program. Janice, what about your point of view? Janice, thank you so much. We appreciate you. All right. I hope y'all can hear and, and see that video. I'm going to stop sharing. Let's see so we can all see each other. Okay. All right. So everybody, make sure your microphone is muted, please, unless you are speaking. There's someone with a 510-978 number. Please mute. Mute yourself. Um, okay. And so I want to introduce the panelists um, so that you all know exactly who's on our panel. 
All right, so I'll start with, we do have our uh, guest of honor, Miss JBH, you just saw the video. She is the CEO and founder of the Act One Group. Um, also an author, I have one of her books called Acting Up. Um, if My young people, if any of you all want her book, um, I will make sure that you get a copy. Just send me an email, okay? And I'll make sure you get a copy because you know I love books and I'm always trying to send y'all some books. Um, want to introduce her. I'll introduce myself. I'm Talia Bennett, the executive director of HHREC. And I want to thank also Dr. Corinne Holder Jackson for being with us. She is the um, executive director of the San Mateo Adult School and CEO of Arise. Uh, Ms. Larissa Wells, where is she? Is she here? Ms. Larissa Wells is our um, founder of Vision One. And then we have Kalik Harrison, who works for the city of Oakland, and he is one of our youth mentors. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with our questions. Uh, go ahead, Robert, you can take it away. All right. Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for showing up. I know I called a lot of you uh, young people last minute just to make sure y'all showed up. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining in on this conversation. This is mainly about uh, this is mainly about y'all. So please make sure y'all pay attention, take notes if you can. And I'm going to get started with the first question. Um, and these first five questions are going to be for Talia, and then we'll move over to the next uh, the next panelist, and so on and so forth. So, Talia, do you believe in the law of attraction? Yes, I do. Uh, it was the law of attraction um, uh, that I use a vision board. I have a whiteboard at home on my vision board. A year ago, I put on there that I was going to meet uh, JBH. And so I, <laughs> I am. I Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I believe in vis visualization, um, the power of prayer and uh, keeping a positive mindset. If you uh, ask, believe, and you shall receive. Yes, I do. Understood. Now, how would you rate your self-esteem um, from one to 10? Oh, boy. Um, through the roof. <laughs> through the roof. And, and I say that because I have been through so much already in my life. Um, God has been so good to me. My father, I, I owe him the, the credit. He um, he is a retired uh, attorney and Navy man, and he uh, instilled so many values in me, um, along with my family, my, my grandmother, my aunts. Uh, they taught me to have self-confidence. And so um, I, I lead with that. So I owe that to my family. Understood. Now, when do you feel at peace the most? Ooh, um, I feel at peace the most when I am standing or sitting on my grandmother's porch. Uh, she was a phenomenal woman. Um, and my home, um, I'm born in Oakland, but I was raised in New Orleans. And so when anytime I'm on standing on my grandmother's porch or sitting down, I feel at peace. I just feel like I can breathe. Understood. Now, how do you practice self-control? Self-control, how do I practice self-control? Um, through the power of, of prayer. Um, I believe that there's enough to go around. Um, and I, I believe in not being greedy. There's no need to be greedy because God and our universe has, um, there's enough for everybody. And, and that's my belief. So um, I try to just make sure I'm, I'm doing my best to not be greedy, whether it's food or, you know, finances or opportunities, I try to share. Agree. All right. And then the final question is, even though growing up, um, sorry, let me rephrase, growing up or even during your adulthood, did you ever experience something really traumatic? Yes, I did. I, I lost my mother um, to AIDS when I was 14. And I had to, back then, the medicine wasn't what it was now. And um, being in New Orleans, we really didn't have the best health care. And so I had to watch my mother um, wither away uh, in front of me and take care of her. Um, and so that was very difficult. Uh, I think of her every day and she's with me every day. But I'm, I'm grateful that God gave me the, the 14 years with her that I had. 
Well, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to hand off the next set of questions to Isaiah. All right. Um, good afternoon. These next set of questions will be for Ms. JBH. Um, the first one will be, when do you feel at peace the most? Oh, wow. I'm glad you asked most, Isaiah, because I've reached a point in my life where I am in a space and place of peace. Um, uh, if you look over my shoulder, you see a picture of my husband who passed away on August 2nd, and he had Alzheimer's. If you'd asked me this question before he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's several years ago, I would have said, I'm most at peace immediately after prayer or meditation. I found through the process of grieving with my two adult children here to support me, that I can be in a constant space of peace so long as I don't allow it to be a separation. Most of the time when we are living a very busy life, we look to find peaceful moments. And what we're really saying is quiet moments. You can bring peace wherever you are and you can speak peace to wherever you are. I've spoken peace in the middle of some of the most exciting or the most demanding times of my life over these last couple of years. So I know it works. It sounds paradoxical, but it truly works. Absolutely. Um, my next question would be, you are the CEO of Apple One. How do you balance people, um, management, finances, and personal time? One of the things I've been teaching uh, for some years now, especially to members of my own team, is that you manage processes and lead people. Many of us when we are in our weakest or our least clear moments, when we've been in the most trouble, it's been because people have been trying to manage us instead of leading us. Manage processes, manage your own behavior, but you lead people. And so for me, I think that's the foundation of understanding how to find balance in your life. Now, I'm an old school person. If you Googled me, you know I've been around for a long time. I'm old enough to be some of y'all's grandmamas, okay? Uh, don't get it twisted. I still wear those uh, stilettos. And as soon as COVID is over, I'll be back in the airports running with them on. But here's the thing that, 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 that I'll tell you about balance. Have any of you ever heard of, and Talia, you got to check, uh, uh, chat it back if they if they're using their chat function or raise your hand or whatever. Have any of you ever heard of a guy called Teddy Pendergrass? Mm -hmm. Okay, did most yeah. hands go up? Because yeah. a lot of folks thought Teddy was Harold <laughs> Melvin because the group was Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Okay, <laughs> but Teddy sang right. a Teddy sang a song and he was talking about it's not a 50-50, not a 60-40 kind of love. People look for balance. They're really trying to find a way to love themselves. That's what balance is about. And so when you understand that you achieve balance by loving yourself, then you can get to the idea that it doesn't have to be formulaic to a 50-50, okay? Sometimes it's 60, 40, 80, 20. Sometimes you feel like you're doing the 100 and the rest of it is on zero. But it's about understanding you're looking for the love in you and don't start doing the math until you're ready to stop doing the living, okay? Don't start measuring whether somebody's giving you 40 and you giving 60 in order for you to have management in your life. Make sure that you're looking at all of your life as a full equation. The other thing I will tell you in terms of a tip sheet around finances and personal time I don't live on a time zone. I'm not recommending that, but I lead a global organization. We, I have offices with people working in over 30 countries and every day more than 20 languages are spoken by people I personally employ. So I'm, I'm doing meetings that don't allow me to be on Pacific Standard Time, okay? So what I learned to do is to be selfish about the time that I do carve out for myself. And I assure that I'm doing those things I wanna do, but the way to make it work, let people know 
and then don't allow them to break your expectation for yourself. That's when most of us get into trouble and we start to think, oh, I can't do that. I don't have time for that. Or I'm going to have to do this or it's going to all fall apart. You just heard me say, I think that I lead employees across over 30 countries. It took a lot for me to learn to do what I'm telling you. It doesn't get too much busier than that when you are a black woman and you are figuring out how to lead these kinds of teams and they are speaking languages and English is not the first one for over 19 of them. And so you have to learn to really live true to what you say when you're telling people you're on personal time. You don't have to take the day off to get personal time and balance. You can take the moment off. You can take the evening off, the afternoon off, but make sure what you're putting on is the purpose that you're doing that for and live true and legitimate to that. In terms of finances, don't spend more than you make. Say no to the loan. Don't spend more than you make or you earn. I shouldn't say make, don't make money. You go to prison for that. Don't spend more than you earn, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a jewel. Thank you. That's exactly what I was about to say. That That is. Um, with that, it's a lot of moving parts. Did you always know that you would become a business owner? Honey, when I was growing up in Tarboro, North Carolina, pull the violin out. Here's the sad song, right? No, not at all. When I was growing up in Tarboro, North Carolina, one of 11 children, same mom, same dad, um, in a very, very uh, Southern Bible uh, uh, community, Bible-based community, I didn't even know what human resources was, let alone that I would be the founder and CEO of a global uh, uh, talent and uh, uh, human resources enterprise. No, I didn't know that I'd be a business owner. What I did know, based on the strength of having a solid mom and dad, and, 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 and that is so precious, I want to pause one moment and say, if you didn't have a mom and dad who were solidly a community in your home to help raise you, make sure you deliver that to your kids. You don't have to generationally repeat the errors that came before you, and you don't have to judge the people who you think were, were, were error prone in your life. You gotta forgive before you can forget. Okay, you gotta forgive. Now, in terms of knowing whether I was gonna be a business owner, I did not. But what I did have was a mom and dad who proved through their lives and showed me by their example that I owned my own behavior. I owned my own purpose and that I would be in charge of my life. They made us read a poem every day of our lives growing up. And I, I'll share it with you later if we have time, uh, the poem that they made us read, but it pretty much exampled uh, how I would live my life. By the way, I'll say one more thing about owning a business. Just because you own a business doesn't mean you own the people who work in it. Done. Thank you. Um, what does project management mean to you? We kind of hit on that earlier. When I said you manage processes, you lead people, project management is about not just getting the job done. That's that little piece you're delivering to. Many projects are happening all across the board in my organization at any given time, all around delivering a consummate solution to one client. So project management is not just about getting that little piece that you're getting done, but it's also understanding how the whole of it will operate, how it feeds to the whole outcome. If you are managing a project, it is not complete, nor is it value enough for you to say, I got my part done, that other was not my responsibility. Now that's a bold statement and hard to live to when you working in a world where I don't know where y'all are coming from, but you better be honest about this. You know, it's some janky folks out there. And there's some folks that's real happy to put that responsibility on you, especially if you at, 
at in the least step forward to show leadership ability or you show a key competency in one area. All of a sudden, all of it's yours. And the next time you see people is when you show up to get applauded or get a bonus for the work done. Project management is about understanding how the whole team works together, as well as how the parts of that more global team are important to the function that you perform within that piece that you deliver to. Was that clear enough? Was that basic enough? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, you me. did hear me to say, always be selfish and demanding enough to ask, how does this project feed to the whole solution? What is the whole thing we're solving for? That's how you can own that project. That's how you can manage that project best. When you understand how it's going to feed to the whole solution. Mm -hmm. um, my next question would be growing up or even during your adulthood, did you ever experience something traumatic? You know, we all need to pause right here and, uh, give honor and respect to the fact that a lot of people experience trauma without screaming about it. And over COVID, a lot of folks have had a chance to think back on why life wasn't working and have discovered it's because they swallowed the trauma. Don't swallow the trauma. Regurgitate it so you, and, and examine it so you can know. So for me, you already heard that I grew up in the deep South in one of the poorest parts of this United States as a black female. Every day had its trauma present in my life. I want to honor that we all cope differently based on so many factors that feed and contribute into our lives. I had a solid mom and dad. I had and have a solid faith. Those were trauma busters for me. They helped me through circumstances that people in my own neighborhood fell under. I grew up in a community that Panola Street divided the white from the black section. Now that sounds real old timey, but if you look at where we are today economically, we still got some economic barriers that divide black from white. And by the way, when I was growing up, that's all we had was black and white. No other ethnicities were present to our community, to my knowledge, other than at that time, white people in my community did not consider Jews to be part of their white community. And we had two Jewish families who I think left uh, on the weekend to go worship somewhere because we didn't have a synagogue. Um, but trauma, that whole system was a trauma cesspool. But I had parents and a faith that helped me to understand that I can live in a world and not be of it. And that's how I balanced myself from that trauma. The most traumatic thing that happened growing up happened for me my 11th grade when I was sent over to integrate the white school. Uh, raise your hand or chat back if you know what I, I mean when I say integrate the schools back in back in the uh, 60s. And it, okay, this was before we had integrated schools. And later I met the man who actually led the court case uh, at the federal level in the United States, Julius Chambers and his, uh, and his legal defense fund fought Brown versus the Board of Education that created, um, uh, that got away with, that did away with separate but equal, where they said black kids and white kids could be educated uh, equally but in separate schools. And they defied that and proved that there was no separate but equal. And I am a child who is the product of that. So by 11th grade, and I know I look young to y'all, y'all can't believe that I'm that old, right? But by, by 11th grade, they sent me over across the town to the white school to integrate. And that was the worst year of my life up until 2020 when my husband, whose picture you see behind me, passed away of Alzheimer's. It was a horrible year. I'm not gonna waste a lot of more time on telling you how bad it was, but my history teacher stood up, up on the desk my first day in US history class and explained to the class, I being the only black kid in that class and a female, why 
Blacks were so suited for slavery by describing the genitalia and the dumbness of the brain of the black male. Now they didn't call them black males back then. They called us Negros, not Negroes, not niggas. They called us Negros, okay? And they explained why Negros were so right for slavery and that any thought different was a was an abortion of justice. And so I sat that year in that class with students looking at me as an abortion of justice in these United States. And right now, when you see me, sometimes I go like that, or if I want to drink, I got this beautiful water for crystal glass, and I'm using a plastic straw in a crystal glass because I bit my jaw so hard. Oh, wow. I bit my jaw so hard my 11th grade year and I prayed to God. You can't make deals with God, okay? And I sat there in my infancy and in my Christianity and prayed to God, Lord, if you'll just let them not see me cry, if you'll let me not shed a tear, I will never come back here. And I bit hard and I damaged the inside of my jaw in a way that I've not been able to recover from to this day with some of the best surgeons and the best healthcare available. Um, it was an awful year. Let's leave it at that. Leave it at that. Okay. It was a horrible year, but it didn't kill me. And I grew stronger. Yes, Lord. Are you still there, Isaiah? Did, did I? No, I'm Are we still, still here. Um, Speak up a little bit, Isaiah, for us, please. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so when we talk about, you know, the different things that you was going through and being and coming up in this environment and trauma busters and things like that. Do you believe that you're responsible for your own happiness and why? Absolutely, I do. I'm going to introduce you to a poem that'll give it to you. You may have heard this poem. For those of you who are uh, technologically engaged right now, if you have a second device, just Google if by Rudyard Kipling and read along. If you don't have that second device, listen to me now. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated. Don't give way to hating. Yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twist it by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken. Then stoop down and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, Lose, start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there's nothing in you except that will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, Walk with kings, but don't lose your common touch. Neither friends nor loving friends can hurt you if all men count with you, but none too much. And if you can fill the one unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, I change the gender here and say, in life, you will have won. I do believe, I do believe to answer your question that we are responsible for our own happiness. I do believe that I don't have to have it all to appreciate it all. I do believe that I can imagine it. I can think in secret and it comes to pass. Environment is but my looking glass. I do believe that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. I do believe that God created me in a way that I have everything I need to be everything I need to be. Am I answering your question, Isaiah? If anybody believes 
believes with me. Would you please chat back, I believe? I believe, definitely, yes, ma'am. Believe. I believe. Yeah, I believe. I believe. This world is full of data. It is your responsibility to turn that data into information. Data without context is just stuff. Yet dreams are made of stuff that's been molded by your own. You see, you can't have a real conversation without total engagement. And a lot of us leave ourselves out of the conversation. It is, if you believe as I, now I happen to believe, as I mentioned, I'm faith-based, so I do believe in creation and God, okay? Evolution for me is just a byproduct of creation. I don't dis evolution. I love the science. I, 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 I took the uh, Moderna vaccine real quick because I'm old, so I got it before y'all be there, okay? I believe in the science, okay? Science and God are not on opposite sides of the pole for me. So I do believe you can you 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 can uh, own your own happiness. You you have the responsibility for your happiness. I also believe that other people impact that, and for some of us, happiness happens a little bit easier than for others. Nevertheless, how hard it is is never a reason to not get it. Thank you. Am I answering a question for anybody here? Is anybody feeling me? Is anybody feeling Absolutely. where I'm going? What I'm saying? Oh, yes, I, I feel you heartedly. I, I feel everything you're talking about, JBH. And and I'm, I'm I keep I keep pausing my screen because I'm I'm getting tears from everything you're saying. I'm just being honest. Like I'm 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 feeling the power within your voice and within your words. And that doesn't come easily to someone uh who grows up in 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 a in a such diverse background who who, who, who didn't have anything. I was homeless my last two years of high school. I've struggled hard and hearing words from not only- but, the, and, and don't ever, don't, don't, I mean, I know you have to do it in terms of the data because we got to get the money and the funding to make sure we're caring for it, but don't ever refer to yourself as homeless. You were at home without a roof because your home is in your heart. And sometimes the people you love help make that home. You heard Luther, I keep telling y'all all these old folks, right? Luther, a house is not a home, mm -hmm. you know, a, a chair, you know, you got to have somebody who cares about you. I get where you're coming from. And I'm here to tell you, don't make the mistake of thinking you got to look at the world through rose colored glasses. Keep your glasses clear so you can see all of it. Keep your 2020, okay? And, and see it. Yes, but just because it's ugly doesn't mean you're not beautiful. And you get to creating your life what you want from who you are, not what you have. And it ain't always going to feel fair. OK, I mean, look at me. I'm out here hustling because, you know, that's what we all do. We on our grind. Right. I'm out here hustling every day against some of the largest companies in the world. They call me everything but a child of God. But it ain't what they call me. We know it's what we answer to, right? And so you got to make sure you're giving yourself the message that you want to receive because you got more access to data in this world than anything else. You know, we got more access to data than we do water. Yet some of us are denied that access to data. I was at home in North Carolina mm -hmm. where I bought a, 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 I bought a historic mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. and couldn't get internet to that house to hold me. Mm -hmm. I am somebody turn your mic off because I can hear you. We talking over each other. Turn, turn your phone off. But I'm sitting there in North Carolina in a historic home registered by the United States as being valuable for historic reasons. Tell you about that house later on. But in any event, I'm sitting there. They say I'm uh, 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 the wealthiest uh, 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 self-made woman, second only to Miss Oprah Winfrey. All that stuff, they throw out data about you, right? None of that mattered because I was in a community that couldn't get internet because it's predominantly black people and they ain't servicing well and the internet going in and out. And I'm on the phone talking with Washington DC one day and talking with Europe the next day and praying that my internet holds up. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you that we all are still fighting that same fight. 
We don't all have the same tools. I wouldn't for one minute disrespect your struggle enough to suggest that mine was as deep. But what I will tell you is that you can't accept your struggle enough to believe that it's a reason that you can't go as far as you want to go. That's what I'm here to tell you. That's what I'm here to tell you. Yes, you know, ma'am. be a trauma buster. Don't let, you know, years ago, my sister Sandy, you got my book, Miss Talia. You know, I wrote about this. My sister Sandy told me when I first came to LA and everybody the black I met, I was like, where are the real black people back then? Don't y'all put me out on the internet and say she's talking about real black people, okay? I'm trying to <laughs> help you to understand something. I came to LA so screwed up about who I was, the victim, uh, at that point I was still a victim of, of, of a racist society. And I looked around me and all the black people were light skinned with what we used to call good hair, they look real, you know, and all this. And here I showed up and I'm dark skinned and nappy hair, I bought this y'all. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm here and, and, and I'm like, how do I fit in with these people? How do I fit in with these people? And my sister sat me down and told me that I was allowing people to get into my head. And she told me this. She said, never let anybody live in your head rent free. Mm. This is your property. Mm-hmm. You own this. You pay the tax for how this stays healthy and well served. Don't let anybody live in your head rent free. If you don't hear anything else I tell you today, you hear that because very seldom do you hear me speak in a negative. It's got to be profoundly critical for me to speak in a negative sense. And here it is again. Write it down, somebody. Never let anybody live in my head rent free. Okay, I'm sorry, babe. Let me answer your questions. (laughs) And I also want to say, too, uh, (laughs) going back to your book, when you were talking about the food, that fancy food that y'all was eating when y'all flew over, I, you know, I fell out on that. I need you to oh, know. Oh, when my sister <laughs> said it looked like a turd on a plate. <laughs> yes. I mean, these people, they, they paying thousands of dollars at the Jacques Cousteau Museum, which is an underground aquarium. And they had the Queen of England's personal jewel, jewel, jeweler, Asprey Gerard, design a pen for us. I don't even know where my pen is. I wore it for years. I need to go find it and give it to my children. Anyway, and they, you know, I'm sitting there with all these rich women from across the world thinking that they made a mistake for me to be there. Or we were really bad off if that's all they could find for black folks. That's how I was thinking to myself, right? And I'm already a multi-million dollar company and I'm still crippling myself like that, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting there wondering who gonna find out. How soon is they gonna find out I don't belong here? You know, and I'm sitting at that table and my sister laid it all out for me. Y'all, we were sitting there and I'll forget how many courses the meal was now, but we sitting there and we get around, you know, one of the courses and they have these beautiful, I bought some of that, uh, uh, some of that, um, China, but we were eating on these beautiful heron plates, H-E-R-E-E-N-D. Go look them up, y'all. And I'm sitting there and, and this Christoph uh, uh, um, silverware by Tiffany, okay? And we eat, I mean, they really doing it all for us, right? My sister said, this crap, look, she didn't call it crap. She used the S-H-I-T word, but I don't cuss. But she said, this looked like turn on a plate, you know? And I was like, okay, she called that out. She called it for what it is. It doesn't matter how they wrap it. If it's due to it stinks, okay? That wasn't what he asked me, though. Isaiah, what were you asking me, boo? Um, my next question would be, um, we've always been told that successful people plan. So how important is planning to you? Planning mm-hmm. is to your life what blood is to your body. Write that down. Planning is to my life what blood is to my body. Your blood carries the secret to all of your DNA. Your blood travels the pattern and the pathway that you are divinely and earthly designed to achieve. If you don't have a plan, you might have a lot of lucky accidents, but you ain't doing nothing on purpose. Did I answer your question? Yes, ma'am. It is critical. It's not something you do when you get around to it. And it's not something that looks like something somebody else is doing. Well i thank you for um having 
just so much wisdom. You've been so wise. So my next question would be, what advice would you give to your younger self? I, I think I may have mentioned it. You have everything you need to be everything you need to be. Write it down and personalize it. I have everything I need to be everything I need to be. Now, I ain't got everything I need to be everything Talia needs to be. I can't lay on social media and decide just because they can do that, I can do that too. So I need to go do that. I can't let somebody else look at me and say, I can't do that because of who I am or how I look. You have everything you need to be everything you need to be. Don't go trying to be somebody else. Be your real self. Be your deal self. Right. You know, and be it stealthily. Right now, you got to gird up to get forward. You hear what I'm saying? And you got to understand who you are about. You know, we had three uh, uh, seniors come out to visit uh, my niece and they are seniors at university and they each attend different universities. I'm not going to call the schools out because one of them didn't have a good outcome. I ain't going to try to diss nobody to school. Okay. Um, but they were asking what, and they were asking, my daughter said, don't say, but it means everything you just said doesn't, is, isn't true. They were asked a question about what their lives will look like in two years and what their plan was for it looking back. Two of them had a plan. One of them had not planned on being asked, so they didn't have a plan. You know, where I grow up, they say, I don't have to get ready because I stay ready. My mom is stealth. She's Southern, she's sweet. She got this little lovely uh, voice, but don't get fooled, okay? My mom doesn't even say, I don't have to get ready because I stay ready. My mom said, you are ready, be ready. Be ready, just live in ready. You got to have a plan. And I'm gonna tell you something. The people with the best plans are best able to pivot. Case in point, before COVID, Companies that didn't have real solid plans struggled like crazy to pivot, mm -hmm. to get people working from home, to redesign product or services, mm -hmm. to support clients in different ways. They struggled, but the companies with real solid plans before COVID had real agile, aggressive pivots during COVID. We are coming out of COVID a stronger company at Act One than we were when we went into COVID. Yes. We had a plan. This is something you just have to believe. And the best way to see if you believe something is to break it down. If I'm believing it, I be living it. If I believe it, I be living it. Okay? Yes, ma'am. I... Well, I really want to thank you for answering all of my questions. I got one last question. We've talked about trauma and we've talked about happiness. We've talked about planning and being successful. Um, my last questions would be two for one. Do you meditate and how do you manage your, your own stress? Yes, I do. I meditate and I pray. They are different things for me and they work so well together to serve uh, for me. And so um, that's something that I really hold precious and dear as a part of my life. In terms of stress, look y'all, I, 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 I know y'all see that S on my chest, right? You know, super, super woman, super woman, super, superhero, right? Um, I'm human. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I exercise. I'm blessed to live on a peninsula where I can get out and walk with nature and not have to see another soul. And, and, and I know folks living in cities and folks who don't live with roofs over their head don't have those options. So I remind myself of my blessings. My best stress management tool is deliberate prayer. You can pray different ways. You can pray a prayer petition where you are actually praying, asking for something. You can pray a prayer of gratitude where you are 
thankful and expressing thankfulness for something. You can do an intercessory prayer where you're praying for somebody else. The best way to manage stress is to sit down and in that moment with absolute honesty, meaning not leaving anything out, because two things can be true. Make sure you consider it all so that there's one truth in it. And you do all three of those prayers together and land on a subject for what is appropriate. Because sometimes one is going to need two and, and, and not need the, the third. But do the prayer of intercession, the prayer of, uh, of, um, uh, of petition, and the prayer of gratitude. Do all of those in that moment. Practice it for yourself. Please, you know what? Babies, do it before you go to sleep tonight. Just do it. Just, just do it in that order intercede on somebody's behalf, then ask something for yourself. God knows your heart. You can't hide your secrets by not praying about it. And then express a prayer of gratitude. When you do that and you let it, you do it so well and so long that it flows like water for you. Not only will it heal you, it'll heal everybody around you because the reason people succeed in life and get a lot of people to follow them isn't so often they know more than you do or they do different than you or even their experiences have, have, have given them better knowledge than you. Sometimes it's simply that they got that glow. And I'm, I'm teaching you how to glow from within. What did I ask you to do? Somebody repeated after me. What did I ask you to do? Uh, 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 chat it back, chat it back. What did I ask you to do? Your stress management. What's your recipe for stress management? The prayers I told you. Now somebody read it because I can't get into the chat and stay on screen at the same time on my iPad. And here I am trying to, trying to look. I know y'all got the three down, somebody. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to tell you one more time. What, when I tell it, chat it. This is your recipe, okay? Here we okay? go, here we go. Hey, now, pray, pray for gratitude. All right, I see y'all. But, but you gotta do it in order. You gotta do it in order. Write it down, okay? Pray a prayer of intercession. That means you're praying for somebody else. Second, pray a prayer of petition. That means you're petitioning on your own behalf. You're asking for something for yourself. And then pray a prayer of gratitude. That means you're being thankful and acknowledging that you have it. Okay? Now, when you do that, you will succeed. It, there you go. There you go, Rasheed. There you go, Brandon. There you go, Landon. There you go. There you hey, go, now. Julia. There you go, there you go. Here's why that works. We are taught that if we ask, it will be given to us. If we seek it, we will find it. And if we knock, it will be open to us. So when you pray for somebody else, automatically your sub self, not subconscious, your sub self receives that number one, you have value enough to share. I can share a prayer. For, there you go. There you go, Sparkle. I can share a prayer for somebody else, okay? It's not about you being selfless or you being so humane that you praying for everybody else, although that is part of it. It's telling your sub self, I first can pray for others because I'm not the neediest in this moment. The second prayer, Intercession is when you pray for yourself. That's saying, I love myself and I honor my creator enough to believe that I can ask for it and it can be given to me. And then that prayer of gratitude is thankfulness. It's saying, I see you, Robert Williams. It's saying, I thank you because faith is the evidence of things unseen. It allows you to pray in faith. When you say thank you for something you just asked for before you even see it in the physical or spiritual in your life, you're acknowledging it as yours. And when it comes to you, it doesn't shock you 
so that you fall apart. Half the people y'all saw as people you admired or you followed on Instagram uh, four or five years ago ain't even got a dollar today because they didn't know how to intercede for somebody. They didn't know how to petition for themselves and they didn't understand how to live in gratitude. That's why Elvis, who was one of the biggest stars of his time, still in all those black folks' music, died Come on now. Died sick and unhealthy. And y'all know some other folks who died or die in that way. And they got everything you think you're going to work or you're trying to get a job to get every day. Because uh. success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Somebody write back to Miss Talia and tell her what that means to you before you go to bed tonight. Miss Talia, share it with me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna help y'all with I that. Will. But write it down. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And when you use that recipe I gave you for life of intercession, petition, and gratitude, then you are success in the making. I love y'all so much. Thank you for having me present. God bless you. Thank you for having me present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss JBH. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Let's, let me see hearts and, and, and thank you. Show me some gratitude in the chat before I uh, turn it over to Kalina and Kalik. Thank you for your time, JBH. My youth out there, let me see some grad. You can turn your mics off and say thank you. It's, it's perfectly fine to do that. I want to hear your voices. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did I help yeah. anybody gotcha. today, Talia? Did I help anybody? You help Absolutely. Me. You for sure helped me. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe one of these days they'll make a movie out inspired by you. Oh my God. You know what? Angela Bassett asked if she could make have the rights to my life so she could make the movie. And I told her I ain't through living it yet, girl. I but know hey, that's it right. will be cool to have. <laughs> <laughs> I want to turn it over um to Kalina uh and Kalik. Um our next panelist, uh, Ms. JBH, we want to be respectful of your time. And so we do have a hard stop at three. And so I know we want to um, speak with Kalik and Dr. Corinne and Ms. Larissa Wells. So I'm going to, here I go, you know me shine you out. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Kalina, our, uh, our Spellman lady, uh, who is going to ask Kalik a few questions. Yes, I will. Thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you, JBH, for your wise words. I will definitely be praying tonight for others, myself, and be thanking God. Thank you. So, Mr. Kalik, I would love to ask you, what do you do for self-care? You help so many people. It's important to help yourself. So what do you do for self-care? Uh, for self-care, first off, I try to recognize where I need self-care at. And uh, it could be mental, spiritual, phys physically. And so once I determine where I need it at, um, I start working on it from there. So, you know, I could tap into my spirituality, uh, read literature or consult peers that um, we are on the same spiritual journey and path together. And I, you know, incorporate a good healthy diet, um, some physical fitness and prayer. Prayer is important to me. And sometimes just sitting still and just reflecting on where I'm at and um, just keeping everything in perspective. And that kind of helps me stay centered. Amen to that. Now, what does your support system look like? Of course, God is always with you and you have people around you that help you. So what does your support system look like? My support system lo looks like my peers that uh, we're on the same spiritual journey with. Um, I'm on the same spiritual journey with family, and um, just people who, you know, we, we want the same things in life. Um, we just try to be positive and we try to, you know, want for each other what we want for ourselves, which is very important to me. And just, um, yeah, just maintaining a good foundation with solid people and um, things like that, that nature. Okay, and my next question for you is, what are your professional goals and what are your personal goals? 
my professional goals well currently i'm a fire inspector for the oakland fire department and the goal i want to reach there is uh the pinnacle would be for me being a fire investigator and like currently right now i um my job i i try to prevent fires which you know new construction uh private or public property things of that nature forestry fires but on the investigative side that would be me figuring out how fires start so it's a little bit more detailed a little bit more scientific things like that so that would be my professional goal and the second question was my personal goal um very passionate about art so i would like to evolve more in my contemporary art skills and um very passionate about music and would like to learn an instrument so that's some of my personal goals oh well, uh giving back to the community um more more personal with the youth get more personal with the youth in the community uh tapping in with them so yeah Thank you so much for that. Now, for the interest of time, we must move on to the next group of questions. Um, and that'll be for Dr. Kren. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank uh, you, hello. Lee. And who is that? Uh, we got RJ on the yes. line. OK, yes. all uh, right, he RJ. Hello, Dr. Kren. It's nice to meet you. Uh, nice thank you for taking you the well. time. Thank you. Um, Thank you for taking the time out of your day to answer um, some questions. Uh, the sure. first question I have for you is uh, describe a situation that you've healed from. Oh my gosh, well, let's see. Um, I hate to date myself, but in 1998, I was working um, as a manager in corporate communications and public affairs for um, AAA of Northern California on my way to an event for them. Um, just finished my MBA. I just finished a, a second bachelor's degree and an MBA and I was on, on the fast track. And I was on my way to an event driving a company car and I was on my way about to two streets from the freeway going across the bay. I live in San Francisco and I got hit by a woman who was high on crack cocaine. She had two empty 40, um, the liter bottles of Old English in the back and she had one in her lap. I remember hearing some screeching of, of a car and I said, oh Lord, somebody's gonna get hit. And the next thing I remember is the fireman cutting me out of a car. Um, I was sideways like this on a, a telephone pole and I had a fractured pelvis, some head injuries, but thankful because the Lord saved me. She was not hurt at all. She, um, was screeching that I got my car got in her way. I remember hearing that as they were loading me into an ambulance. Um, I, it took me two years to get back to being able to walk without um, a walker, crutches, and a cane. I was told that I would never wear high heels again. Doubtless that I would be driving or or uh, walking normally. But again, the Lord saved me, and all is well. I'm well. Um, it was, it was a healing for me because I was in the hospital and they didn't understand exactly why I couldn't stand up because they had to do three dimensional x-rays. They had to do a lot, but they were trying to give my job away to my secretary mm. who was white. Now, mind you, I had two bachelor's degrees and an MBA and she barely got out of high school. They didn't know the full extent of my injuries. They didn't know if I could come back. This was a new department. Now, before I got that job, it was a highly um, old school company. There was not a black face on the executive floor. They allowed us to be a supervisor, but never a manager. So they were trying to create a new image because the world had changed. And American Express was kicking their butt and taking names. They had a travel agency, um, BMW, Nissan, even Ford was offering free emergency roadside assistance when you bought a car. So AAA was finding themselves obsolete. So they were trying to change it, which is why they decided to bring me in 
and the face of corporate communications and public affairs. And I brought forth some good um, some good projects. We had no money because we were a not-for-profit membership agency, but um, I was able to secure relationships with American Express, with Evenflow, with Channel 7, and came up with the concept of, of have a seat. Evenflow gave us safety car seats for, for babies, for parents who couldn't afford to buy them. We had the HCP, uh, the California Highway Patrol come to a AAA office for those who couldn't afford a safety seat for their child to show you how to safely install that seat so the child would be safe in a car. Um, they love the ideas and, and the innovations that I brought forth. But again, this is the black face. And so um, it, it didn't go over well, but my secretary was blonde and blue eyed and they felt that she would make um, a better choice. Um, so it took me almost two years to get back. And when I did get back, they told me that, oh, I was also licensed in property and casualty, which is auto insurance, home insurance. Um, and I also had a life insurance license, but they told me that even after all of that, that when I was ready to come back to work, they no longer had a job for me. So that was a, that was a healing process. Um, coming from a family where I was the first generation of a, of a college graduate. Um, my grandmother grew up in, in, uh, in center Texas, not even on the map. Uh, wanted to be a nurse, but us did not get to be nurses there. So she came to California so that she could be a nurse. Um, Talk to me about the importance and the value of education. Went to George Washington High School where I was told that college was not in my future, that being a secretary would be a really good job for me. I was graduated from high school at 16 years old. I had great grades. It wasn't about grades. It was the fact that there were 100 black students in a school of 1200 people. And all of the black students were told we were supposed to not go to college, but we were supposed to get jobs in the state of California. So I had to, I, I was dismissed from the company. Uh, vocational rehab, they gave me to say that, you know, we can rehabilitate you so that you can get a job. Well, I had a degree in finance. I was an insurance professional. I was even um, could was qualified to teach at a community college, a university. Um, but they told me that um, there was something like being a hairdresser would probably be a good job for you. Um, and so it, it was it was it was amazing. Um, at the time that I was ready to go back to work, um, we had a recession. It was the year two thousand. Dot com became dot gone, and there weren't jobs anywhere. But the Lord worked it out. He gave me an anchor for my mind. It worked out. Yep. So, uh, Dr. Corinne, in your opinion, what are some ways that the youth uh, can combat depression and anxiety? Oh, my goodness. Youth, you just are so blessed. God has put you here. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Your DNA is so unique inside of you that nobody has the same fingerprint. Nobody has the same DNA. And I can guarantee you that he has a job for you to do that only you can do. So it's time for you to get excited because no matter what your past looks like, it doesn't dictate your future. And the most important thing that you must remember and hang your hat on this is that no condition is permanent. All things change. The only constant we have in this life is change. And Miss Brad, Miss Janice Bryant Howard said that you have everything inside of you that you need to be successful. I get so excitedly passionate about helping individuals discover that untapped potential because I truly believe that we only use about ten percent of the potential we actually have. How do you tap into it? Strategize. And how do you get from where you are now to where you're going to be? You should get excited because what I see each of you that I can see, oh my God, Joel, I see future so bright. I need to wear shades, but so do you. You're going to do some great stuff. And um, my last question for you is, uh, how do you deal with negative thought patterns and how do you counter those negative thought patterns? Um, just like Miss Talia and Miss Janice, I am a true believer. Um, the Bible says, and, and I read it as my, my book, uh, and, it, and it is the book that has helped me get over everything. And it says, think on these things. 
Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, think on these things. When you have to understand that there is a battle for your mind today, and you've got to be careful about what you let get into your mind. We say this garbage in, garbage out, garbage in, garbage stays. So you have to guard it. Really what you put your eyes to, what you listen to, what you read. When you get up in the morning, read your scriptures. That's your, that's your, that's your, you got, my grandmother told me, baby, you can deal with anything as long as you dress properly. So when you get up with your, with your right mind, with your scriptures that talk to you about who you are and whose you are, you can go out there and deal with anything. You can deal with anthrax because you dress right. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kern, for the wisdom and knowledge that you presented all of us with. And uh, now I will send it to the next panelist. Thank you, RJ. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, Kalina. You did a wonderful job. My leaders, my youth leaders. I'm going to turn it over to Rashid, who is going to be asking Miss Larissa Wells a few questions. Rashid, Hello. you there? Yep, yep. All Thank right. you for your knowledge. I'm going to ask you three questions. In your opinion, how do you personally heal from trauma? That's a big question, right? <laughs> right, Larissa? <laughs> yeah, repeat the question. <laughs> how do you heal from trauma? Oh, we can't hear you. Let's see. No. No. We were hearing you a minute ago, though, when you first started talking. Let me see. Phil, is Phil on? Maybe headphones? Should she take the headphones out? Ms. Larissa, if you look at your toolbar where it says where it has mute and unmute and click the little arrow, it'll it should switch you from um, or allow you to check your select a speaker or select a microphone. And you can be able to select your your earphone or your or your oh, computer. I can't hear you. Go ahead and uh, unplug it's your mic. Right. Yeah, it's yep. unplugged. Okay, okay. look, she's she's it's showing uh -huh. us. <laughs> um. it's okay. Let's see. Okay, no problem. Is there a call-in number she can use, like a Zoom call-in number? Oh, yes, good. but we we I've been on Zooms with her before. She um she knows how to. She'll either log off and log back on. Um, while she's doing that, young people, this is a good time uh, to re reflect. Uh, how are y'all doing? Is this is this helpful? Is this a uh, is, oh, you know, is this information? Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. Ah, all right, you in the building. Hey, now. <laughs> With a little stick on my teeth. <laughs> um, so how do I heal from trauma? Um, well, I seriously pray. Um, uh, you know, just a brief story. I was in a fire last year. Um, and I, it happened at 3.30 in the morning. It was in my house. Um, I did not hear the fire alarms. My dog woke me up. Um, I couldn't speak for two days. Um, so that lets you know I was seriously traumatized. I left with nothing. My keys were still in the house. Um, my dog was smart enough to run out with me. Um, two weeks later, um, still not knowing where I'm going. This is what you call faith for real, because I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had nothing. Everything gone. Everything that I knew it was gone. So that's traumatic enough. Life as I knew it was gone. So for me, I gave my life completely over. Um, for me, that was just it. Um, my life had been pretty traumatic all the way up until that point. And so now... I have devotion like absolutely every day, every day. What I do is I go 
to um, YouTube and there's a channel called Grace for Purpose. And I listen and I write it down. And now I'm learning how to rewrite what I just heard. And then I meditate over it. For me, that gives me, that has given me peace. Um, but it's a different kind of peace. It's not a peace of this world. Um, it's a peace far beyond that. Um, it's unexplainable. Um, it is so soothing. Um, I had people trying to sue me for the fire. I, I, and I still got somebody trying to sue me for the fire. Now I'm saying, I don't know how we got started. Would y'all let, let me know? You know, so, um, but in the midst of it all, um, I'm good and I'm still prospering. So nothing can stop me from achieving what has already been set forth for me. So, you know, that's, that's what I do every day. I do not miss a day. Now that's key. So where there are some things that are in my life that are inconsistent, especially with this COVID, that is the one constant that is in my life because I cannot go on my own power when I walk out this house. There's already all kinds of things against me. There's already all kinds of things. You know, I pray for traveling mercy. I, I talk to them all day, all day. So that's how I heal um, from, from trauma. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, since now we know how you heal from trauma, what is your advice for today's youth experiencing trauma other than the ones that you've just provided? Yeah. So let me tell you, this is what I honestly and truly in my heart believe. Number one, I want you young people to understand what I did not understand. And that is that you have power. You have all the power, but we have been led to believe that we, especially people of color, that we got no power. We got no voice. But let me tell you, you do, because when it comes to that uh, Declaration of Independence, it just starts off, we the people. So we're going to stop right there and say, we the people. If right. there is something that you disagree with, let's say while you're in school and you are not ap appreciating the way that somebody is speaking to you. You know, I figured like this, if your if, if, if God don't speak to you that way, Christ don't speak to you, well, you know, doggone will him, man is not going to speak to me in this manner. You have to understand that you are important and that you matter. You are valuable. And as was mentioned before, also only one set of foot, I mean, footprints and fingerprints, dead or alive. Now, that in itself should tell you that's amazing right there. But if there's something that you disagree with, I'll give you an example. Um, there was some uh, there was some young people that I used to teach. I used to teach urban design to 11th and 12th grade, well, 10th and 11th grade students. And the food was horrible. It was absolutely horrible in their school. And I went and tested it myself. And guess what? It was horrible for sure. And so I said, well, all right, this is what we're going to do. But it also comes with uh, some adult supervision and only not to not to tell you what to do, but to help guide you along with what you already feel in your heart to do. I feel that that's what we as adults should. First of all, we need to listen. So and that's real. So I listened to what they were saying. I got the number of the state <laughs> of the state super. Um. Oh, gosh, the. uh State Director of Nutrition. Yeah. So I put the number on the board. I said, I know that you guys are not allowed to have your cell phones, but I'm giving you permission to put them out. I have four questions on the board. Do not stray from these questions. Pronounce all of your syllables because that is important. That is important. If the word is yes, then say yes. If the word is no, say no. If the word is four, don't say foe. You missing an R and a U. So I'm saying have some integrity and some dignity within yourself and understand your importance and your value. And then they called. Uh oh. In those Thank you. Frozen. Yeah. Am I frozen or she? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Who's frozen? Me or her? <laughs> That's all right. We We have done very well thus far. We we got about ten more minutes, so let's see if, if she if she comes back on, cool. That's a blessing. If not, um, I just appreciate 
all of you. I'll keep saying that. I'm just giving gratitude. And I hope this has been helpful. Um, let's see if she comes back. In the meantime, give me some feedback. Um, Brandon, Chance, KJ, I'd like to hear from you all in particular. Maybe starting with yeah. KJ. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Uh, is, is my name showing up in the, in the chat? I did it off the phone. No, who is this? This, uh, this Che. Oh, okay. Hey, hey. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm glad you're on. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, me too. Good listening. Very good. Thank you for the feedback. Appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate everything, too. Like, I like to, um, the advice, um, everybody gave about, you know, self-empowerment, you know, having love for yourself and prayer. That's the one thing I took away from that is prayer too, you know, just having faith. So yeah, I really appreciate everybody on the panel. I, I'm glad to be here. May I say something? Absolutely. <clears throat> Write this down. Prayer without works is dead. Okay, let me write that underline, that. yeah, that underlying message for you, boo. When you praying, you act on it, and by acting on your prayer, if you don't see result, that means you that is your best tip to go back and do some restudy to set yourself right. You know, we, and I say we as society, adults have given a lot of false messages out there by raising our children up. And when I tell you, you can, you know, um, like I believe in, in, in the Bible uh, passage that says, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That doesn't mean I can go out there and do everything. It means I can do those things that I'm strengthened by Christ to do, that my faith strengthens me to do. And so you earn your faith. You don't just learn your faith. You walk and you work through it, like Dr. Uh, Karen was telling us, you know. Um, I think that if you, we got to be honest that we short sold y'all to believe that everything was so instant and so easy in a digital world, in a world that's filled with microwavable food. Y'all know when I grew up, my mama used to go out in the back and make lye soap in a big black cast iron pot. And then the chi and my aunt Mag would wash clothes with something called a washboard. And as kids, we would play. They taught us how to squeeze the sheets out by playing and circling to turn work into play. Um, so I grew up with a lot of stuff that helped me to understand and appreciate the value of device and technology as it came along in my adulthood. But we haven't given you the benefit, the joy and the history of who you are. Folks don't want to know sometimes, but you know, the biggest thing that we have to come square with you on is that the stuff we show you in books and movies are books and movies, but the reality of your life is nothing like reality TV that you watch. Half of the people you saw on reality TV, I think I mentioned earlier, four and five years ago are broke today. And so you got to learn some core stuff that helps you. That's why I tell you success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Success isn't what you have. It's what you're doing. It's how you're feeling. You know, it's how you're impacting. Mother Teresa was successful. She died broke. Dr. King was successful. His family ain't millionaires. Gandhi was successful. Jesus Christ was successful. All these people. Yeah, we are very faith-based. And in COVID, a lot of people ran to their faith who had kind of left it in the drawer at home when they were going out to work every day. But you got to understand that you, your journey is at your pace. And because my faith has evolved to a certain level, don't judge yourself based on what I'm doing with my face. Take time and enjoy yourself. God never gave anybody else something intended for you. So don't be in such a hurry to get it. Be disciplined, be thoughtful, be thorough. You know, come correct to your happiness and to your joy. 
Don't rush to it. Understand the difference between a feeling and a being. You know, you can take something and feel good for a minute. You can be something and be feel good for life. And so I'm going to shut up a little bit, but I just don't want us to all suggest that if you go home and you just pray for it, it's yours. Faith without works is dead. Your prayer and your faith work are prescriptive to you the way a student goes and learns medicine. But in order to be a true surgeon, you got to get out there and you got to do the cut and you got to see the blood. That's how a true surgeon operates. And that's where the healing comes from. And, and, and in terms of that question about managing trauma, most folks, my, I was going to say old folks, most folks my age, I'm the oldest person here today. Most folks my age uh, have not gone through some of the stuff you're going through. That doesn't mean my journey was any less important to me than yours is to you, but we got to face reality. If we both trying to get to the same place and you got further to get there than I do, it ain't been fair. But God didn't promise fair, God promised justice, you know, and they are different things. And so work hard to get to where you want to go, but don't let anybody undersell you to believe that Oh, well, if I'm not making it, I must not be prayerful enough. I must not be faithful enough. You also deserve a community to help you get there. Reach out, establish your community. I'm so, so uh, honored that Talia and, and, and Robert and Isaiah invited me to be a part of HHREC community. So, you know, reach out to me through them if there's something you think I can help you with. But folks can get real dressed up and they can forget where they came from. Those are most often the people who lay them right back there. So, you know, let's let's help each other up. You've helped me today. You know, I'd like to think I've helped you, but you've helped me today. But please, please understand, yeah, you're getting a real rough deal. And then this multiple pandemic season of COVID, yeah. economic disruption, social injustice being splat splattered in front of our face. Most of you on this call, like me, have personal incidences with policemen or society that have been so unfair, sometimes really, really damaging to us, whether it was the police or whether it was the corporate thugs that uh, Dr. Korean encountered in uh, trying to steal uh, her job away. Um, Y'all had it all at one time thrown at you in the front of your adulthood. And that's real. And that is traumatic. And that's why I talked to you about not swallowing that trauma, regurgitate it. I learned years ago from somebody I value. You can write this down too. Uh, you're only ever as sick as your darkest secret. When you swallow that stuff and think it's making you a man or making you stronger, because you don't break from it. The strongest trees don't break and they don't break because they bend. Mm. And so, you know, y'all had it rough and you had it a lot rougher than most of the people trying to teach you through it. But I really need you to know that you will be stronger for it, but you got to sow some deep roots I went home to North Carolina to that house I was telling you about, and I cried because I lost a couple more trees in the rains. But you see what happened is those hundred year old trees were still standing and very tall, but some of those younger ones had fallen over because their roots hadn't grown deep enough. And so they weren't anchored into the soil deeply. So when the water came and the soil got wet, they fell over because their roots weren't deep and strong enough to hold them up. Y'all are in your root building season and you got a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Don't let anybody steal the trauma that's going on around you and just call it trial. OK, don't let them steal it. It is real and it is hard. And God knows I wish my prayer could wipe it away for you, but you are stronger for it. Abraham Lincoln is lauded as being the person who uh, who uh, uh, stopped slavery in this country. By the way, that was an economic decision, not a civil justice one, but I ain't going to try to bash Come Lincoln on now. <laughs> but, 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 but what I do want to tell you, and it was an economic decision based on the bodies of your ancestors uh, as being property. And y'all know about the three-fifths law and stuff. But one thing he did say that was true, and you can learn from anybody. If you didn't have a mom and daddy like mine, 
taught you by example. Learn from the mom and daddy you had who taught you by the wrong example. If you can't learn from the right example, you can learn from anybody. Bless them for the lesson. OK, the lesson. But Abraham Lincoln said something that uh, is true. He said that um, the worst thing you can do for a person you love is to do for them what they can do for themselves. While I would pray and wish and work away the circumstances that you're encountering right now in this multiple pandemic season, the truth is you're going to come out. And you can be a lot stronger and a lot more successful than those of us talking to you today because of what you're learning and what you're going through today. You know, so um, I just really wanted to honor for you that, no, it would be total fakery to sit here and suggest that we went through stuff tougher than you're going through. Now, I think my civil rights stuff and the school stuff was pretty rough. Don't get me wrong, that was horrible and awful. And it was very discriminating and incriminating. Um, but y'all facing some real stuff. And I pray to God that five years from now, we'll reconnect in this, in this form or face to face. And y'all will tell us what you learned and we'll be reading and seeing what you're doing. Thank you, Ms. JBH. Thank you everyone. I wanna be respectful of time and I got to get out of here and catch a flight to get back home. My staff and young people, I'll see y'all next week. Uh, to our panelists, I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Corinne, Ms. Larissa Wells, Ms. Mr. Khalid Harrison and Ms. JBH and youth. Thank y'all. I hope this was a blessing for you. Um, we did re record it. So if you all want to go back and listen to some of these jewels that were dropped, you'll have the opportunity. OK, again, I want to just end this and close this out with deep gratitude. Thank you all. Thank you. So much. Thank, thank, you. you. Thank, thank you to everyone. Thank you. Really thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Sorry, thank guys, you I was not able to answer all of your questions. My Internet just died on me. I apologize for that, but I came back. No it happens. It happens. Thank you, Miss Larissa. Yeah, Thank I just want to say this meeting was pretty helpful for me, honestly, because, you know, sometimes you can get off track and, you know, having them come on and just reminding us of our, you know, to believe in ourselves and self-worth. It was like a breath of fresh air for me, honestly. Yeah, well, you guys, you guys are really important, honestly, and, and I, I just really want you to know how important you really are, because, you know, coming from Oakland like I do, when people ask me, well, what part of Oakland? I'll be like, all of it. <laughs> came from all of it. And I came through the 80s. And I'm going to tell you all something. It was rough. <laughs> It was rough because that was when every everything happened. The jobs left. They got outsourced. The, the crack got flooded in our neighborhoods. Panthers were killed off. It was it was horrible. So I get it. Um, and, 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 and you know what else? They need to remember that you do have currency. Whether you got a dollar in your pocket, if you got an ID in your pocket, your strongest currency is your vote. Get informed on mm, those mm. local levels, guys. Mm, Everybody mm, show mm. up at the national level to vote for president and get excited about what's happening or not happening. I'm telling you, if you can name all your local officials, you're doing your yes, job. If absolutely. you can't, you are not doing your complete job because nobody makes it to president without coming through the local system. And so you can weed out who actually gets to go there. And you got to be voted. Those local decisions influence who become judges and send some people to prison for, 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 for some weed and other folks go on to corporate jobs for uh, uh, cocaine and, 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 you know, you and, and they decide who picks up your garbage or how many books you get in your classes or whether you get devices and technology. All of that is local elected decision makers. Y'all have the strongest currency of your life in your vote. Be informed voters so you don't have to sit in front of your screens, whether you're looking at a TV or a cell phone and see another insurrection. You got to make sure you're voting. I'm not telling you which way to vote. However you vote is your right in this country, but make it an informed vote. Your vote is your currency and it is stronger than the dollar bills you don't have right now. Uh, yes, 
I would agree with that. I was I was kind of on along those lines. Um, I, I was getting there, but um, thank you very kindly. I appreciate appreciate everything. Um, thank you, yeah. everyone. I appreciate you all. I, I, I thank you. You all have a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you to my panelists. Thank you to my young people. Appreciate y'all. And yes, I'm going to be emailing you, you some slides that Miss Larissa Wells put together for us with a lot of different statistics and powerful information. So I'm going to be sending that out. That's our parting gift. Okay. And so thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.